Some of them we just have to look at and keep quiet. Because we are waiting to see how things would pan out. And then, at the end of it all, the whole world would see how wicked we are towards each other. My brother, my sister. But, briefly, I would like to look at something. Now, you know that there's a vetting going on in Ghana, right? Right now. My brother, my sister. A lot of information is coming out. Minister designates, my brother, my sister, are being verted. In other words, people who have been chosen by the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Akufuwadu, to be ministers of state, are being verted by parliament as constitutionally required. And my brother, the answer some of these minister designates are giving will tell you that we are in for trouble. My brother, my sister, today I'm not going to look at the content of what they are talking about. I want to look at another thing. Have you observed how these minister designates dress? It looks like, apart from one or two that we have seen so far, the rest of them seem to have a certain kind of uniform. As if that is the uniform for verting. Everybody is wearing a suit and a tie. My brother, my sister, these are the same people who would come out later and tell us that the textile industry in Ghana has fallen flat. It looks like we like to tickle ourselves and laugh. It, it looks like we all want to play the ostrich. Every one of us, my brother, my sister, is responsible for the problem in this country. At the end of it all, my brother, my sister, we are the same old Ghanaians who would come out and blame our problems on some other people. We are quick to blame our problems on slavery. We are quick to come out and say things that we ourselves could solve. Say nasty things which could have been avoided. You are all dressing in suit. You all go there, sit down in your coat and tie. You are waiting till Friday comes. Then you would wear some African print. And you don't even care where it comes from. Whether it was printed in China or printed in Afghanistan. What you just want to do is that. You want to wear it now and get rid of it because you are so uncomfortable in it. And the rest of the days, you represent some other people. How can you hate yourself the whole week and love yourself only once in the week? As I said, I don't intend talking about this for long. We've talked about it over and over. And a lot of our ministers who are supposed to be role models to so many different people, the people that the taxpayers' money is used to pay, the people who claim they are serving us, therefore they are our servants. They represent the white man and don't even represent us. They owe allegiance to the white man. They don't owe us any allegiance. My brother and my sister, as it stands right now, if I was the president of this country, every minister of state should wear a Ghanaian print. Every minister of state would wear an African print. As it stands right now, my brother, my sister, we are spending so much money importing different types of uh, fabrics. We are spending so much money, my brother, my sister, importing clothing, designer clothing, Paris tailored suits. New York tailored suits and our textile industry is falling flat. It looks like we are closer to colonization 
closer to slavery than we are to liberation, to freedom, to independence. All of them, and they feel good, wearing their coat and tie, sitting down at the verting and talking big grammar. Some of them who were ministers before this time are unable to even tell some basic things around their ministries. And when you talk, they are so good at threatening you with legal issues because they know that they are wig-wearing goons are ready to stand by them, twist the hands of justice until those hands get broken and then they throw you into oblivion. To God be the glory. Posterity is a dangerous beast. It shall catch up on you one after the other. Let me leave it here and tackle another thing. Now there is this thing that I'm reading from Peace FM Online. And it says, European Union shows support for homosexuals and lesbians in Ghana. Help them in opening a new office for their activities. And I read first two paragraphs. The European Union, EU, has confirmed it participated in the opening of a new office space for a lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer intersex rights group in Accra, reiterating its support for similar organizations. The group LGBT plus Rights Ghana on January 31, 2001, hosted a fundraiser to officially introduce and promote its office and community space. In attendance at the fundraiser were some invited guests, including the Australian High Commissioner, His Excellency Gregory Andrews, the Danish Ambassador, His Excellency Tom Noring, and some delegates from the EU. I'll leave it here. My brother, my sister, listen. Apart from the fact that it is so disrespectful to the sovereignty of his country, I want to look at another thing. By our laws, this is criminal. And you were the same people who gave us these laws. In fact, the British gave us these homosexual laws. And these laws are still in our law books. And have never been removed. There are so many laws. My brother, my sister. That Ghanaians. Uphold. Every now and then. And they are archaic. Outmoded. Outlandish. Obsolete laws. But they are still in there. So you, you ask yourself. What are the legislators doing? The legislators. What are they doing? Can they not see this? Or how long does it take to expunge some of these laws from our books? I'm just asking general questions. Now let me descend on this. By our laws, as it stands right now, my brother, my sister, it is criminal to be gay. It is criminal to be lesbian. It is criminal at the same time to be queer. It is criminal, in fact, to even be transgender. These are our laws. And we are a sovereign nation. I want you to follow this argument properly. By our laws, this is what it is. Now, if the European Union can come into this country and assist with the building of an office to promote something that is criminal in our jurisdiction, then it tells you what kind of idiotic people we are. It tells you what kind of disrespectful people these European Union people are. How many people are following this argument? By our laws, whether good or bad, it is still in our laws and we are bound by these laws. Now, if these laws are telling us that it is criminal to be gay, homosexual, lesbian, and so on and so forth, my brother, my sister. And the European Union is confirming. And even the Danish ambassador 
has decided to be part of the opening of this office officially. My brother, my sister, artists con contain here the Australian High Commissioner is also part of the official opening of a criminal in court's office in Ghana. What are these ambassadors doing in Ghana? I'm just asking. What are they doing in Ghana? People are going to misquote what I'm, I'm saying. But I'm used to stupid people misquoting wise things that I say. So I'm still going to say it. What are these people doing in Ghana? They should be sent back to Australia immediately. And they should be sent back to Denmark immediately. Because they have disrespected the sovereignty of this country. How many people don't understand? Now, let me now come and deal with whether it is good or bad to be homosexual or lesbian. I just tackle the fact that in our law books, this is criminal. And if you know that it is criminal in our law books, my brother, my sister, and you still come and try to force a bitter pill down the throats of the people who all together came to decide that this is very bad for our people, it means that you have no respect for our sovereignty. You have so much disregard for whatever we do in this country. And if I was president, you would not even stay in this country for another day. The Australian ambassador will return to Australia. Go and build 600 offices, 6 million offices there. The Denmark ambassador will go back to Denmark. And he will be there. And build 1 billion gay rights offices there. That's what I'm saying. Because they have disrespected our sovereignty. Listen, in America, they have laws that they uphold too. Listen attentively. They have heard certain laws in their country. In Australia, they have certain laws that we disrespect in our own country. For instance, polygamy. Polygamy. In America, there's nothing like polygamy. If you want to be polygamous, then you will hide in that shroud of secrecy because you are Probably going to be seen as a queer person. Better still, somebody from the Stone Age. If you are still thinking about polygamy. Can I, as the ambassador of Ghana to Australia, open an office there in Australia to promote polygamy? Can I do that? If I try to do this, my brother, my sister, I will be kicked out of that country and disgraced. It's the same thing these people have come to, 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 to do here. Remember, I, still, I have still not discussed whether homosexuality is good or bad. No! I'm just looking at the point that these things are criminal in our laws. And these same laws were given to us by the same white people. Now they the themselves are coming back and forcing a bitter pill down our throats with so much disregard for the same loss that they gave to us. And that makes me angry. It means we have a useless country. We have a president who is sleeping, cannot wake up and stand for justice. If I was the one who did this, all these weak wearing goons would be running after me. If I was the one who did this, my name would be all over in the media. And your sleeping president would push people after me to come and hold me up and deal with me and teach me sense. When I said 80% of parliamentarians smoke marijuana, you were quick to hold me. Come, apologize or give us proof. They expected that I'll come and say, okay, MP for blah, blah, blah. You, I saw you smoking two rolls of weed. You too, I saw you. You too, I saw, even if I knew there was no way I would have done that. That would have been a betrayal. Of the whole movement. My brother, my sister, you were able to pull me and ask me to come and defend what I had said, or better still apologize. But your boss's boss sent people down here to promote homosexuality and lesbianism, and you have opened a beautiful office right here in this country, and they are quiet. The police doesn't know about it. 
Australian High Commissioner was there. Danish High Commissioner was there. And they glorified the whole thing. Because in their country it is okay. But because we are weird people. Because we are jungle people. Because we are stone egg people with no brains. They have to come and teach us that homosexuality is alright. My brother, my sister. There's an all African adage that I love. He said that the man who feeds you controls you. That's what is happening. Your president is gallivanting, circumambulating the whole earth as if he was doing a run around of the Kaaba in Mecca, begging for arms. Yet he tells you that Africa is beyond aid, Ghana is beyond aid. They need money. They are running around looking for money for their campaigns, running around looking for money for COVID-19. When other countries have stood their ground and they've been able to deal with the COVID-19 far better than all those people running after arms and aids and grants from the West. The man who feeds you controls you. You think they haven't seen the office? You think they don't know that the, um, these ambassadors were there? But they are quiet because their master has spoken. Now let me deal with whether homosexuality is good or bad. My brother, my sister. When you go to America, you have gays. When you go to England, there are lesbians. There are queer people. Queer intersex. We are people who are transvestites. They are there. They all work in the production of some of the things that you import left, right, and center. Some of the, especially that you live in a country where they disrespect their own products. That is why all your ministers at the Vatican are wearing the white man suits, left, right, and center. Do you know that a lot, a lot, a lot of these designers are gay? The suit you are wearing, a lot of them come from the hands of gays and lesbians. You wear them, you have no problem with that, right? A lot of the food that you go to buy from the supermarket were produced by gays and lesbians. You eat that and you say, oh, this is good, right? You have no problem with that, right? The money that you get from America, from England and those places as aids and grants and alms. I want to add alms, charity, because you are a charity-taking nation, useless charity-taking nation. You take all those monies. Guys work very hard and pay taxes. Their tax is part of the money that you get at AIDS, as grants, as alms, as charity. Yet you don't like them. Right? Don't be hypocritical. Once you don't like me, love me, love my dog. Hate me, hate my dog. If you don't love gays, you don't love lesbians, let their money be. You go to America, you don't have a problem with lesbians and, uh, and homosexuals. You embrace them. You even eat with them. You do business with them. Yet when they are coming into your country, it's a big problem. What hypocrites these people are. How can you be so hypocritical? They are paying tax. Their tax money comes to you. If you don't like them, don't take their money. If you don't like them, don't patronize them. You cannot do selective justice. What is good for the goose must certainly be good for the gander. That's the point I am making. It doesn't matter to me whether homosexuality is good or bad. I have my own stance. Now you say you are a religious person. You are a religious person, yet your religion teaches you that you should embrace all these people and by your acts, the Jesus that you say you worship tells you that hate the sin and not the sinner. Yet you hate the sin, you hate the sinner, and you get back into the sin, love the sin, do a lot of sin with the sin, and you want to hate the sinner. When you are a sinner yourself, idiot, fool. Fool. There's too much hypocrisy in this country. Too much hypocrisy. Your Bible tells you that hate the sin and not the sinner. If you are supposed to slaughter all sinners, some religions even say, once you are part of this religion and you leave that religion, you should be killed. Hey, then who will be part of that religion? Eh? Is it a cult? Is it a cult? Is it an occultic movement? 
that when you join it, you can't leave it. Once you leave it, you should be slaughtered. What is this? Then who will be part of that religion? Huh? Who will be part of this religion where once you are part of that religion, you cannot be out of it? Then it has become an occultic movement. You understand? Now you do all these things, my brother, my sister. And the point is that the leaders or the founders of all these religions were so tolerant to people like the gay, tolerant to people, even thieves, even murderers. They were so tolerant and they used their own lives to convert these people from their murderous nature into humanity, true or false. But we are so intolerant. We fight people left, right, and center. We even refuse to shake hands with people who don't belong to the same religions with us. Then we are prehistoric men. We are worse than animals. I don't belong to your religion. For that matter, you don't want to do business with me. I don't belong to your religion. For that matter, I become your enemy. What kind of a human being are you? When you say God is love, yet you are full of hate. You are a son of Satan and not that of God. It hurts me so much when I hear some of these things. Danish ambassador has come to help open an office for gays and lesbians. It tells you that you have a sleeping president. It tells you that your institutions are weak. Weaker than carbonic acid. They only use the laws to suppress and depress each other. But the main enemy is freed of the hook. To God be the glory. I'm not going to dwell too much on this. But remember, I made two very important points in this. One, once it is a sovereign country, we have the right to deal with our laws. Until we as a people decide that these laws are not good. So we take them out. No other nation has the right to come and force their beliefs and their laws on us. Or else we better go back into slavery. We better go back into colonialism. We better go back into imperialism. We better go back into nothingness. Some people don't understand. One day, you would understand. My brother, my sister, I throw this out. Now, there is something else I want to look at. And this is very important to me. I'm reading this from Ghana Web. And it says, why are the Chinese allowed to cut down for export Ghana's neem trees? Neem trees, listen. Why are the Chinese allowed to cut down for export Ghana's neem trees? My brother, my sister. And you can find this on Ghana Web. It was published on Monday, the 1st of February, 2021. And it reads... Information reaching me, and the writer is called Roxon Adolfo. Adolfo. He says, Information reaching me from Ghana this evening of Sunday, 31st January 2021, precisely from a native of Weamuasi Mwasi in the Ashanti region, is that the Chinese have been given unfettered access to neem trees in the locality. They are felling them. And cutting them up for export to China. It is not just that they are cropping the trees. Remove a few branches and the leaves. But rather cutting down the entire trees. Right down from their roots to the branches and leaves. And shipping them out of the country to China. One thing I know since my infancy is that neem tree is medicinal. Our ancestors and most of the present generation did use the and continue to use the leaves of neem trees to cure themselves of fever and other diseases. Final paragraph that I'm going to read. As I speak, many people are using it to treat their deadly COVID-19 infection as either a preventive or a curative medicine. People do testify to its efficacy in curing a number of diseases, especially when you inhale its vapor when fully covered up in a cloth or blanket from your head to toe with a half basket full, bucket full of steaming concoction of neem 
under the cloth or blanket. Thank you. My brother, listen. You say you are independent. Yet everything you do is dependence. If truly Chinese people in Weamuase are cutting down trees, not just any trees, but cutting down neem trees, then we have become animals in this country. Why am I saying we have become animals? Hey! COVID-19 is coming. COVID-19 is coming. COVID-19 came. Hey! Oh, it's killing only white people. Oh. Black people are... Hey! Then he started killing black people. Hey! Okay. Okay. It is only in the West. It's not too much here. Oh. Then boom! Africa is hit hard. Now as we speak, Ebola is also here. And the Ministry of Health has started talking about Ebola. An alert. Alarm has been raised about Ebola in Ghana. Now, one of the all-time medicines that we have used. In Nigeria, they call Nim Dogo Yaru. That is the name of Nim in Nigeria. Among the houses, they call it Dogo Yaru. Scientifically, they call it as a director indica. My brother, my sister, it is home to India. But God blessed Africa with Nim or Dogo Yaru or as a director Indica. And it does so well for us. My brother, as I talk, I have tears in my eyes. You know why? It started with a rosewood. We saw how the Chinese invasion on our rosewood rendered us limbless. We all remember the story of Aisha Huang. Followed by Helena Huang from the Huangs in China. They came here. Your empty headed senior minister who is now on permanent retirement and we don't care. My brother, my sister, told the whole world that despite the heinous crimes they meted out to the people of this country, there was no reason to punish them. After all, punishment will not give us money to save the economy. Common sense. Flown out of the window. My brother, my sister, today, we saw how the Chinese invasion, and I'm particularly saying Chinese invasion because it was Chinese invasion. It was no Indian invasion. It was no British invasion. Not an American invasion. It was a Chinese invasion on our rosewoods. We saw how people were killed left, right, and center as it was alleged in several media cycles on the Galamsey fields. How they destroyed our water, water bodies. The water that used to be clean and clear like glass right now is dead and dumb like mud. And you don't care. Four more for Nana, four more for Nana, Mahama, four more for Nana. No sense. You have given four more to Nana. Mahama is fighting in court. My brother, my sister, they are doing whatever they are doing. Yet, Galamse is still going on. The fish that used to be your delicacy, they've all gone extinct. The raw wood that we would have used to help our ailing economy is now carried away hook, line, and sinker on a silver platter to China. Now, their venom has fallen on Nim. As a child, we didn't have chloroquine. Some of you don't even know what chloroquine is. In my days, chloroquine was the thing. In my home, Chloroquine was so useless because the neem was there. All you needed to do was to chew one seed of the neem. Chew it, bitter as it was. The next day, you will run out of malaria. Today, we are hearing that in Weamuase, Chinese people are not only cutting branches. They are uprooting neem trees to go and prepare probably a vaccine for you to use for COVID-19. What a country. We pride ourselves in providing raw materials. Every time. 
and waiting for people to produce, sell it to us at neck-breaking prices. And we sit back and we become a raw material nation, never industrializing, never ever adding value to our brains and our persons. When I speak like this, some people get offended. Some people say, oh, he's insulting people. If my insults will help develop this economy, then let me pile more insults. If my insults will make you a better person, will make me a better person, will make our children and children's children a better people, then let's pile them up with insults, right? It's common sense. We build the point right from the beginning to the point where we have to heap venom on the people who are destroying us. True or false? So that is what is happening. Nim is now failed and it carried to China. Hey, babe, please, if this is what you trust your politicians to do, may I beg you that you allow China to come and colonize us again? Because at this point, it looks like we have no reason to be independent. No. Denmark, Australia can come and open gay op offices here and tell you that you guys are savage. Forget about your stupid laws and think like the white man. Men should sleep with men. Women should sleep with women. A man can change into a woman and a woman can change into a man. Transvestite. Don't you see that the world is developing? That is what we want. They force the office on you because you have no brains to think what is good for you. You don't see any problem with that. Chinese coming, galamseying themselves all over the place. And galamse becomes a campaign message for political parties who have no respect for COVID-19. Right after COVID-19, they send the police out to beat you and slap you to stay at home. But when they were politicking, no, COVID-19 was nothing. It was only a figment of our own imagination. Am I talking too much? All right, I hear you. I understand you. It's been the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushunamo, to God be the glory. There must be a new movement of the youth. A youth that will refuse to be fed by anybody so that they will not be controlled. A new movement, critical thinking generation, for whatever, and it's all about mad. A movement against disorder. These guys are all disorderly people. Old men and women, disorderly old women and men in power. They themselves are disorderly. How can they bring order? Think about it, brethren. I pray that this country gets better. I pray that wherever you are, you will see wisdom in what I'm saying. That you will see that it's not a selfish thing. That you will see that despite all the flaws, left, right, and center, I'm not perfect. You will still see the content. That it is something that is for the upliftment of our people, devoid of any hate for anybody. We don't hate people. We don't hate people. No, sir. My name is Black Rasta. I appreciate you. Yes, but for the wicked politician, who is the author of the doom that we find ourselves in? Posterity is a dangerous beast and it's coming for you. My name is Black Rasta.